Hey everybody, it's Alicia Riser from Arise Above Occupational Therapy, and today we're bringing you a ton of new ways to use things besides weights in your home program and in your telehealth therapy program if you have a neurological condition. This is a good activity to work on, again, elbow flexion and extension while you're pushing out and bringing it back in. You're extending that elbow out and pulling it back in. Again, if you'd like a little bit more resistance, you can use Play-Doh, you can use putty, or better yet, let's make some cookies or a pie crust and we can definitely roll it out to give you some additional feedback. If you don't have a rolling pin at home, maybe you have a pizza wheel. Again, you can work on elbow flexion, bringing it as far back, and extension. Again, because you're holding on to the pizza wheel, you're working on mixed motor patterns, so you have flexion at the fingers, you're maintaining your wrist in neutral, trying hard not to let it go like this. You want to keep it and push that wrist down, keeping it nice and straight. And you're going to push and pull, moving out and in, locking that elbow out as best you can, and pulling it back. If you have one of these awesome items at home, it's a nut grinder. You can take your affected hand and hold the grind. And you can work on elbow extension. Also working a little bit on rocking that shoulder. You're working on your pinch to hold it. If you're unable to hold the actual handle, you can flip it around and use your affected hand as an assist to hold the base of the item while you use the non-affected hand to actually perform the task. It's always good to incorporate the affected side with what you're doing so that your brain realizes that that's still a part of your body and that it's useful and functional. Who doesn't have an ice cream scoop at home? What you can work on is taking a cotton ball or any sort of item, even a grape or a blueberry, holding it as best you can, the ice cream scoop in your affected side, using both hands together so your brain is working together you can place the cotton ball inside the ice cream scoop. And again, you can either work on supination, where you're turning your palm even up further, or you can work on pronation, where you're turning your palm down. Again, it gives you feedback because you're watching the cotton ball fall out of the scoop. As best you can, working on palm up, and palm down. When you're working with the ice cream scooper, you can even work on shoulder internal and external rotation. So if you're putting the pom-pom into the ice cream scoop, you can bring it out. My elbow is locked in at my side. I'm still working on shoulder external rotation. And then I can work on either supination or pronation to dump the cotton ball. I'm coming back into internal rotation loading it up again, bringing it back out, and giving a dump. You may or may not have bean bags lying around the house, but I'm sure you have a spatula. Again, if you're not ready to actually cook a pancake or do an egg yet, you can practice this skill by sliding the spatula under your bean bag and flipping it that way. Again, you can work on palm down, or pronation, you can work on being fancy and flipping it that way so that you're working on supination. Again, you're working a little bit on shoulder and elbow as you come around. Again, you can flip many different ways. And if you start to work on speed, you can see how many you can flip in a minute. And then switch direction, see how many you can flip in a minute that way. If you'd like to work on supination pronation, 
You can get a salt shaker or any kind of shaker. You can hold it as best you can. And then you can work on turning your palm up and your palm down. You can even go this way too, depending on which movement you want to work on. If you have trouble grasping the item, the thicker the salt shaker or pepper shaker is, the easier it will be for you to hold. If you have a meat tenderizer at home, or even a hammer, or a wrench, any of those things where something has a handle and it has a little bit of weight to the other end, you can definitely work on, again, supination and pronation with that palm up and down. So use this to stretch, especially if you're tight here in your forearms. Use the weight of the meat tenderizer to pull you back and hold it and maintain. And then use those muscles to control it and bring that meat tenderizer right back down. And then you're gonna lift up again. And use the weight of the meat tenderizer to stretch back, hold it, your fingers might be trying to come off, try and really grasp them on there. And then bring down. If you want to work on more gross movement, you can place the tennis ball on the cup as your target. Again, working on finger extension, elbow extension. If you have a potato masher, we can use that as well to our benefit. If you don't have dough, or anything at home, any Play-Doh. If you're just putting the potato masher on some sort of squishy object, you can even stabilize that object and you're pushing down. You're actually getting an isometric movement here because you're pushing down with all your might, but it's not, the muscle actually isn't moving. So this is a great strengthening activity. I can actually feel it all the way in the back of my arm here working that tricep a little bit, working on resisted elbow extension. You're also working on holding that potato masher handle. And we're pushing down and relaxing up, getting a nice, strong push, just using a potato masher. If you have a cookie scoop at home, that's another way to work on grip strength. Again, if you place your affected hand around the cookie scoop and you squeeze and relax, that will work on hand strength and grip strength. Again, you could put another cotton ball in there if you'd like, if you don't have an ice cream scoop, and work on supination and pronation. If you'd like to work on grip strength while you're at home, take a sifter and you can put your hand in here and then you can squeeze. What's nice is if you put some flour in there like you would a normal sifter, you get some feedback because the flour will actually come out the bottom. Better yet, make a cake that requires some sifting and you can really work on some hand function there. If you have tiny little cups at home and a pair of handy dandy tweezers, you can work on stacking. Again, working on pinch, hand control, elbow extension, depending on how far you're reaching out. You can even work on flipping these over for supination and pronation. Wrist flexion, extension, trying to turn the cups around. Again, stacking them. You can even make towers. This is just a pair of salad scissors. So you might have these laying around at home. Okay, and what you can do is you can use them to grab different objects and bring them towards you. 
Depending on the weight of the object, it can be easier or harder. So you can grade this up or down. Again, look at all that shoulder movement I'm getting. I'm getting internal and external rotation depending on where my target is, right? I'm using a sustained grip and I'm bringing the object in and out. You could also work on elbow flexion and extension depending again on where you put the item that you're lifting. There's lots of ways that you can make this easier or harder for yourself. So if you see an activity on this video and you're saying, oh, I can't do that, there's different ways to modify it. You just have to be a MacGyver. You have to think, well, if I make it lighter or heavier, or if I make it bigger or smaller, right? You can definitely do all these tasks at home if you have any of these everyday household items. Opening and closing of any kind of jar is always good. Again, you can use both hands together. If your hand is not strong enough to open the jar with the affected hand, again, using it as a stabilizer to hold the jar so that you can open it with your non-affected hand. But if you are going to try and use it, again, you're gonna use a cylindrical grasp here and you're gonna try and grasp around here, squeeze as best you can. We're working on lots of movement here, radial and ulnar deviation of the wrist. You're working again on flexion of those fingers. You can see I'm actually even working on shoulder abduction because I'm bringing my arm away from me. So if you happen to have some planters foam and some extra golf tees around the house, you can take the golf tee and pinch it this way and place it in your foam. With your index finger, you can push it down for some isometric strengthening and extension. And then you can grab a marble and place it right on top of the golf tee. Really working on finger extension. Pinch. You can even trade which finger you're pinching with your thumb. Pushing it in. Grabbing a marble and placing it on top of the T. Again, really working on fine motor control. And pinch. If you have a chip clip at home, I got this one at Dollar General or the Dollar Tree, you can use this also to work on your pinch. You can either do Two finger known as a three jaw, or you can just use one finger and just use a pinch this way. You really want to focus on making it a C pinch over making it more of a straight pinch here. So what you can do is if you have at home marbles, or you can even use grapes, blueberries, Cheerios, and what you can do is you can pick up a marble with the chip clip and bring it to your target. Like I said, you can use different pinches. If you wanna work with your ring finger and your thumb for strengthening, you can even get it with your pinky. It is possible. Kinda of like the claw game. And like I said, if you don't have marbles at home, you can use different food items also to reach. To work on your pinch, you can also take your marbles and pick them up. with your different fingers and your thumb. If you wanna make this more of a challenge, you can work on picking it up with your ring finger and your pinky. And in here, between your index finger and middle finger, you can hold an object, be it a pen or whatever have you. And so you're working on strengthening in between these fingers at the same time while you're working on a pinch here. Again, you can use any kind of household item that you want. Cheerios, grapes, larger marbles, smaller marbles. And this can work on your pinching. If you're having trouble straightening your fingers, you can just take a cereal bowl right here and you can place your hand on top 
And then you can just practice lifting one finger, ring fingers are always hard, at a time. But if you have trouble coming into complete straight finger position, using a bowl to kind of allow your fingers to curve down is always a great idea. Another finger activity that you can use, even if you don't have a ball around the house, you might have an apple. Again, working on holding the object, holding the ball, and what you're going to do is you're gonna alternate lifting up your index finger and your pinky. Index finger and pinky. If that gets really easy for you, I want you to hold your ball or your apple this way, just between your thumb and your index finger, now switch to just your pinky and lift up. So you're gonna just be holding it with your thumb and your index finger, switching to hold it with just your thumb and your pinky. Back and forth. If you have a toilet paper or a paper towel tube, you can use that for our next activity. If you have some hair ties, or some rubber bands. We're gonna use those and we're gonna pick those up. You're gonna try and work them so they're around your fingers like this. And you're gonna work on really extending those fingers, opening them up, and putting them around the toilet paper roll. Again, trying to get that thumb inside too. Working on really opening those fingers and placing them on the tube. You can use rubber bands as well. This is a little tougher as it's smaller. So again, you might have to use your other hand to get it around your fingertips. And then again, you're gonna open, place it around the paper towel tube. The smaller the rubber band, the more resistance it will give you. And the harder it will be to open those fingers, but that's a good progression. Again, coming around the paper towel tube or a you can even use a vegetable can or a soup can, any cylindrical kind of object. Again, working on opening those fingers, strengthening those extensors way back here in your forearm and getting it around the tube, working on finger strengthening and extension. If you have an ACE bandage at home or an ACE wrap or any piece of fabric actually will do, you can tie knots in this. It's working on both of your hands working together. You can see what kind of movement I need to have in order to make that work. Keep the roll ended in. And you can make knots as tight or as loose as you want. And then you get to untie them. This is where you're using, again, a lot of pinch strength. Using your hands to pull the knots apart. And then when you're all done, you can work on rolling the ace wrap back up by using Lots of finger movement here as well. You can do this flat on the table if you need to. You can also use both hands working together. Let's not forget about everyone's favorite, laundry. So everyone has, I'm sure, a washcloth or a hand towel at home. So you can work on incorporating that affected side into folding clothing or towels or items like that. It may not look pretty, but again, it's a step in the right direction of turning on your brain and telling you that this hand is a functional hand. So again, as best you can, you can grab the end, you can work on pulling it over, folding it in half, right? So you can work on the actual folding of the item with the washcloth while we have it here. You can work on finger flexion and extension. So really work on 
pushing and pulling, giving you a little bit of a resistance there. You can also work like we did with the Ace Wrap, unrolling the washcloth and working on that pinch. Lots of things that you can do with that hand and this washcloth. You can also use it for grip strengthening. Now we have, if you don't have a squeezy ball, you can work on really trying to work on some grip strength. Right? And the thing we want to remember is for much as we work on gripping, we also want to work on extending. So working on that motion where we're really extending those fingers with either a rubber band or like that. So working on maybe that toilet paper tube task that I've shown you to work on that finger extension. Working both directions equally and balanced so that one doesn't overpower the other. If you want to again work on finger strength, finger flexion, take any sort of spray bottle that you have. You can work on pulling that back and getting some feedback. You're working on your grip of the actual bottle. And then you can take your washcloth and you can wash off that table. This is another item that you can use at home. I suggest maybe finding one that doesn't have any more lighter fluid in it. But if you don't hit the safety, you can still work on an isometric pullback with each of your fingers. You can put your index finger in there. You can put your middle finger in there. And again, working on an isometric pull. If you want to try and use many fingers together, you could put the safety on and work on getting some feedback to see if you're lighter for your grill or your campfire is going to work. If you have golf balls at home or any size equivalent, you can work on a little in-hand manipulation here. There's always one way that's easier if you're going clockwise or counterclockwise. This is usually a little bit more difficult and you can see how my thumb has to work a little bit harder when I go this way versus when I go this way. The goal of this is to be able to rotate them within your hand without the balls touching. If you'd like to work on some fine motor and pinching, I've just taken a sponge and I've placed some toothpicks right in the sponge there as my target. And then I'm going to use different kinds of pinches again, pad pinches with each finger. So we're working on sequential opposition. We're working on pinching with each finger. And depending on where you place your Cheerio or your nut, if you don't have any Cheerios at home, some of the men folk might have some nuts out in the shed. If you reach out, grab your Cheerio, and then you're going to place it right on the toothpick. Again, working on elbow flexion and extension, you're working on your pinch based on where either this sponge target is or based on where you're going to get your Cheerio. Again, you're going to reach out and place the Cheerio right on the toothpick. Switching fingers. Elbow flexion and extension and fine motor with pinch. If you have dice at home, you can practice stacking them. Again, with different fingers. And you can also practice finger extension with them. People usually have paper clips at home, so you can use various size paper clips. 
and you can either make a paper clip chain. This works on your fine motor as well. You have to kind of separate the paper clip and make your chain. Or what you can do is you can take an envelope or an index card which you might have around the house and then place the paper clips around the edge of the envelope. You're working on pinch with this hand. You're also working on pinch with that hand. We can't forget about coins because everybody has coins in the house. So you can work on picking those up, moving them around in your hand. So if you pick up one, two, three, and don't do the cheat shakedown. What I want you to do is keep them in your palm of your hand. And if you push them to your fingertip, then you can put them in a slot that you've made out of a Tupperware container, kind of like a piggy bank. If you have a piggy bank, you can use that as well. So you can work on moving that change within your hand from the palm to your fingertips. You can also stack up your coins. So you can stack them up. You can work on bringing them to the edge of the table with finger flexion, with bending your fingers this way. If you happen to have a game like Perfection, you can take a clothespin and grab your piece, pick it up, and turn it to fit into its slot. Sometimes you have to use some wrist range of motion. You're using your pinch to kind of fit it in the slot so that it works. Working on depth perception, all of those good things. And if you want to work on a quick grasp release, what you can do is you can bounce a tennis ball on your table and you want to do a quick flip so that you're catching it with your palm up. As this becomes easy to you, you can start to catch it with your hands down. The higher the surface is to your hand, the quicker you have to work on grasping and releasing. You can also bounce it against a wall and see how quick you are for catching it. If you have a peeler at home, you can definitely use this with an apple or a cucumber or a potato. And again, using both hands together, this is a good activity for your brain when you're using both hands together. Hold the item in the non-affected side and you can use the peeler to peel the apple. Again, it's working on grip strength, it's working on range of motion. If you're unable to hold your peeler, again, just flip. Use your affected hand as best you can to hold the item that you want to peel and then you can peel with the, with the non-affected side. Again, incorporating both sides of your brain and body using both hands together. If you have a can opener at home, you can grab that and then put your affected hand on the crank for the can opener. And again, you're gonna work here on a lateral pinch. So if you can grab around the crank of the can opener, and use that almost like you're turning a key in the ignition. You're going to grab it around that and you're going to work on wrist movement too. You're going to be forcing your wrist up. My wrist is up right now as I'm going to grab the can opener. I'm going to pinch using a lateral pinch and then I'm going to bring my wrist into flexion all the way down. This one might be a little tougher, but it can be used for refinement of fine motor control. If you have a barbecue skewer or even a piece of uncooked spaghetti, and then some tweezers and some Cheerios, Cheerios are my favorite to use as an object, you can grab right on the edge of the Cheerio, again using both hands together so you're incorporating both sides of your brain, and bring that Cheerio right onto the skewer or the piece of spaghetti, and you're gonna push it all the way down. Again, picking up. This is also working on some visual skills if you're having trouble there. 
is really one of the more challenging activities, but you can definitely use those tweezers and place it on your target of either spaghetti or a barbecue skewer. If this is too difficult for you, you can definitely just work solely on the pinch using your tweezer. So if you hold it like a pencil, okay, and then you can just again work on elbow extension if you really want to move your Cheerio far away. You can also hold it using a lateral pinch. So hold it in the palm of your hand and then bring your thumb around it so that you're pinching it that way. And you can also move your Cheerio around your working surface that way. If you're having trouble with sensation, either you're hypersensitive and everything that touches you right now goes right through you, or whether you're feeling more numb and you're not feeling things so that you're really having trouble picking things up and using items, a sensory bin is a good thing to have. So you can use everyday items like a bag of split peas, or you can use any of these dry peas. They're fairly inexpensive. If you just obviously open the bag and you can put them in there and then you can just put your hand in and just manipulate the beans or the peas you can even use elbow pasta noodles that way and just to kind of stick your hand in there and move it around so that you get some sensation going right on your fingertips you can work on pinching another thing that's great to do is to hide small items in there and they don't have to be super small you can hide an extra key that you don't know what it's for in there you can put a little bouncy ball, you can put pennies or quarters, you can put anything that you can think of that's not sharp in the bucket within the beans and then try and find those without looking. See if you can discriminate and see if you can find those items in the sensory bin and pull them out and try and identify them without looking at that. Is it a shell? Is it a pencil eraser? Is it a rubber band? And that's a good way to kind of get your hand used to new textures, new sensations. If you're having trouble with numbness, pins and needles, or just hypersensitivity in general.